VGTV is a special program for our Vista Grande students and their families. It is made possible by the generous support of the PTA as well as the parents and teachers of Vista Grande. Welcome to another snazzy episode of VGTV. I'm Chloe, your host for today. We have a lot of interesting topics to cover today. Speaking of cover, I hope we all took cover over the past weekend. I don't know about you, but I've never seen it rain so hard before. We can talk about weather all day, but we have to get back to VGTV. First, we have Mr. Meineke to talk about the toy drive. Hi, Hi. Mr. Meineke. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, thanks for having me. Do you have any kids at um, this school? I do. I have two kids here. I have Sarah Meineke in fifth grade and Ben Meineke in second grade. That's cool. So what do you do for a job? I am a firefighter in the city of Oakland, and I help uh, people every day when they call 911 for emergencies. I hope there's not that many 911 calls, and that must be a really important job. Thank you. We, we tried our best, and we think it's important, and there, there are a lot of emergencies every day. We help people from medical calls who are sick to fires and car accidents and anything that people need help with calling 911 for. Well, good, good you're here. Thank you. So what is the Toy Drive? The Toy Drive is a very important program that the firefighters in the city of Oakland have started to try and help thousands of needy children and families throughout the city of Oakland each holiday season to make sure that every kid gets a nice holiday and Christmas season. And how can, um, this, how can Vista Grande stu students participate in it? Well, if, if most kids or all kids from Vista Grande donated one toy, unwrapped toy, it would make the biggest difference throughout the Christmas season in the city of Oakland for all the needy kids. It would be a very big help. As you can see right here from behind us, some examples of $10 will get you a lot of, a lot of options of toys to buy, bring an unwrapped toy, and it would make all the difference in the world for a, a lot of children. That's nice to do. Are there any other pro programs you participate in? Yes, so the, the Random Acts organization, which this toy drive is run through, is a year-round organization. It's not just the toy drive, and we help families and children throughout the year in the city of Oakland who might lose a family member or lose their everything that they own in a house fire. We can do things as much as a wheelchair or backpacks for children or school supplies or clothes if they lose it. We do, we do the most random um, acts of kindness towards people and families and children throughout the year in the city of Oakland. That's really nice. Thanks for coming. Thank you for having me. So don't forget to bring an unwrapped toy into the NPR before winter break. I think we would all like to know what's going on around Vista Grande. So here's Luke with VG Spotlight. Hi, Luke. Hi, Colin. <coughs> and good morning, VG. It's nearing the end of the year, so listen with good ears. As you might already know, the turkey trial was rescheduled from November 16th to November 30th because of rain. But again, because of rain, the turkey trial was rescheduled to December 7th, and it has been renamed the Jingle Jog. And also, the toy drive is starting today and will end right before winter break. Donations go to the Oakland Firefighters Alliance, who will give the toys to the kids who don't have any. But careful, like Miss Meineke said, the toys have to be new and in perfect shape. And and also, the holiday sing-along will be on the 21st, so start thinking on what to bring that day. You can bring a Santa hat, an elf hat, reindeer antlers, or anything else holiday related. And finally, after school enrichment classes have started, you can register online to join them at our um, VG website. And, well, and it's off to winter break. Well, that does it for this week's VG Spotlight. Back to you, Chloe. Thanks, Luke. Oh, sorry. I was caught up in this amazing book that I forgot the show. That I forgot about the show. Hey, maybe Julia can come teach us about it. Hey, Chloe. Hi, Julia. Ugh. 
Today for Book Talk, I'm going to be talking about the Harry Potter series written by J.K. Rowling. In 1997, the first book of the series was released, The Sorcerer's Stone. When it was released, Rowling decided to write more and turn it into a series. The series was called Harry Potter. The second book was called The Chamber of Secrets. When the third book was released, it was called The Prisoner of Escoban. The series went on until there were seven books. The Sorcerer's Stone, Chamber of Secrets, Prisoner of Escoban, Goblet of Fire, Order of Phoenix, The Half-Blood Prince, and The Deathly Hollows. In the beginning, Harry in the in the beginning, Harry Potter loses his parents to a, to a wizard named Voldemort. He is a mean and nasty man. So Harry has to live with his obnoxious aunt and uncle Vernon. They absolutely hate magic. That would be dreadful to her, for Harry. When he realizes he's a wizard, he gets to learn spells and go to a wizard school called Hogwarts. He learns magic and fascinating spells. He also meets new friends. Harry becomes an amazing wizard and learns the true meaning of magic. Throughout this series, he tries to get revenge on his enemy. I can't tell you if he does or doesn't, but what I can tell you is that this series is amazing. If you're not into scary things or magic and spells, this wouldn't be a great book for you. I would advise these books for 4th and 5th graders, and even before that, you should check with your teachers to see if these are at your reading level. That's all the magic I have for you today, Muggles. Back to you, Chloe. Thanks, Julia. I would like to know what's going on around the world, so here's Grace. Hey, Chloe. Hi, Grace. I'm here with Around the World, and as you all know, the holidays are coming up soon. I don't know about you, but to me, the favorite part, of, my favorite part about the holidays is, of course, the food. Since my family is Danish, we have a special breakfast food called Abelskiver. Hey, look, there's Chef Julia with a fresh batch. Chef Julia is in the house. Abel Skeever is a sphere-type pancake ball, in the U.S. often called pancake puffs because of their fluffy texture. My family often puts jam, sugar, or butter on our Abel Skeever. The Abel Skeever pan has seven hash, half sphere indents, so the Abel Skeever can turn, turn round into a round-like shape when it cooks. You often cook on a stove. You can find these at your local Trader Joe's store. Hey, Coach Nelson, try one. My masterpiece. Ow. Yum. Thanks, VG, for listening Listening in on a Danish holiday tradition. Bye. Thanks, Grace. Did you know that the show's not over yet? And did you know the next we have Justin with Did You Know? Hi, Chloe. Hi, Justin. Did you know that concussion experts, doctors, athletes, and other people are trying to set age limit boundaries for contact sports such as football, lacrosse, boxing, and hockey? What does that mean? It means that experts are trying to take away contact sports from kids under 14. Many people agree with this, including NFL players. They say that it's just a game and they don't want to put their own sons at risk. They also don't think it's worth getting a concussion, becoming paralyzed, or even dying. Concussion expert Dr. Robert Cantu lists a few reasons why it is worse for kids to play contact sports. First, kids' bodies are too small for the heads like a bobblehead. This makes them easily be able to whip back their head and get a concussion or whiplash. Also, they don't have as much coating or insulation on their nerve cells as adults do, similar to the outer protective covering on a wire. Lastly, kids don't have as good equipment or experienced coaches to prevent injury. Not only does Cantu want to stop collision and contact sports, but he wants to eliminate what could be injuries in non-contact sports, such, so such as soccer players from hitting the ball and baseball players from sliding headfirst into bases. Chloe, can you imagine not being able to head the ball in soccer? That'd be weird. That'd be bad. Other experts argue that choosing 14 is random and that risking getting an injury is just part of the game. They argue that if kids wear protective equipment, and to be taught the sports correctly, they'll reduce their chances of getting hurt. What do you think? I think I'm going to stick to dance. Yeah. Thanks, Justin. Hi, Kate. Who are you interviewing today? I'm interviewing some of the animators for my mom's company, Preschool Prep. That's really cool. Let's take a look. 
I'm here at Preschool Prep Company talking to some of the artists who make the DVDs. So Nick, what do you do? Uh, I'm a main character animator, so this is how we start. First we get a script and then we uh, start what we call uh, animatic. And it's kind of like a basic sketch uh, showing when and what is going to happen. Wow, what, what do you do next? So after we uh, finish the animatic and that gets approved, we go ahead and start the character animation. And this just uh, does exactly what the character is going to do in the entire movie. Wow, thanks Nick. You're welcome. And this is Lewis. After Nick does the design, designs, Lewis, what do you do? I do the backgrounds. And I would start with some background elements like the sky and do some foreground, midground elements like the ground and the path. Some more background elements and end with the scene being complete. And you see the character in there. Wow, that's cool. Thank you, Lewis. You're welcome. So after all that is finished, Manny, what do you do? I get a person like you, Kate. You, you know, we've, we've recorded you before, so uh, we get uh, the voice recorded through the microphone, and then uh, it gets dumped over uh, to the software, and this is where I dump in the sound effects, the music, and the voices. And when all of that is finished, this is what it looks like. And that's how all of the animations are made here at Preschool Prep. Wow, that was so cool. What was, the, what was your favorite part of the interview? Probably learning how they use the monitors. That's really cool. I know we all love playing sports. So here's Jack with Falcon Fitness. Hi, Jack. Hi, Chloe. Good morning, Falcons. Did you know here at Vista Grande, we can almost put together our very own Olympic team? We have some of the most talented athletes right here in our very own school. These athletes compete at the top level in their sport. This weekend alone, we sent two swimmers from the Sycamore Stingrays to the Junior Olympic swim meet, Jacob Sutherland and Olivia Stark. Chloe, I'm excited to see how they did. It yeah, must have been crazy swimming in the rain. Yeah. Moving on to soccer. We have Griffin Turner and Ethan Lopez playing on a highly competitive Division I gold boys soccer team. And Griffin even finds a way to compete on a top lacrosse team as, as well. Audrey Noachek and Annie Huther and Jaden Panovich and our very own secretary, Julia, play on a girls' Division I gold soccer team. Chloe, doesn't your sister Emma play Division I gold soccer? Yeah, she's on the Fury. I'm sure you can agree, playing on these types of teams is like having a full-time job. Then we have our girls' gymnastics team. Caitlin Lewis and Katie Corbett compete as level 5 gymnasts at Edge Gym in Dublin. They train 12 hours a week all year and all year round. They competed in eight meets this season and were required to do all four events, which included bars, vault, beam, and floor. All these athletes put in many hours of training and performing. Chloe, you're a competitive dancer. How many hours a week do you spend practicing? I spend about seven hours a week practicing. What about you? I know you played on a high-level baseball team all year round last year, and you got second place in the 10 and under World Series. How much hours a week do you spend practicing? I usually practice two hours a day, whether it's baseball practice or just speed and agility training. Chloe, the one thing I sure learned about spending so much time training after school is you need to be focused and on top of your homework assignments. School is a priority, and you definitely can't put things off till the last minute. You also need to make sure you're getting plenty of sleep, eating healthy, and drinking lots of water is very important too. We know there are many other Olympians or other types of activities that our fellow students enjoy after school, so VGTV would love to hear what you guys spend your time doing after school, so please let us know. Now back to you, Chloe. Thanks, Jack. That's another snazzy episode of VGTV. I would like to thank Sophia for being camera and Lucy for being producer. And don't forget to bring in a toy! See you next week!